In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to pre-cut what you're seeing on the screen on the ground so that when we get up on the roof, all we have to do is assemble it. This video is sponsored by Huber Engineered Woods, the makers of Advantech and Zip System Sheathing. Slow, slow. All right, guys, so as of yesterday, we recently started beveling our sleepers. So this is for an overframe valley. Like literally, we've not done that in 20 years. But seeing Ben Morton do it, he convinced me it's worth, so it took about three minutes for a 24 foot sleeper. It was 22 foot 11. It took about three minutes to rip it, but here's why there's benefits to that. We pre-cut all of our jacks before assembling this just for the sake of the video. And this 12 inch works right on the money. So let me just walk you through all the angles and then what we save by beveling it. So instead of pulling layout from the gable for, for overframe jacks, for California jacks, we pick an arbitrary 12 inches. That makes this bay pretty small. It basically comes from plumb to seat, and it's just, it's an easy number. We could have easily gone 16 inches, it doesn't matter. From the 12 inch, we can calculate with the Build Calc app how much each jack gets longer or shorter, in this case, only longer. So we add that to 12 inches all the way down until we get a length close to what our last common raptor was. Make sure that you do it right. I just got done uh, recutting all of them because I got it wrong. I just punched the wrong number because I'm an idiot. So how do you know where to lay out the downhill side? Because we like to measure sharp and sharp to sharp. Really simple. Use the Build Calc app and it generates the 712 sheathing angle which was 39.59 degrees. So since we picked 12 inches, we enter 39.59 as our pitch, 12 inches as the rise, and we just click run, 14 and a half inches. So this was pre-cut, we just put all this together and mocked it up for the sake of the video, and it worked. So that's how you figure out your first layout. Now we can just hook and go two feet, or whatever your spacing is, all the way out, super easy. This is also your angle for sheeting, so that the guy that's giving you numbers, all you have to know is this distance, assuming that this is four feet. And that angle, always give you that in. That means the guy on the roof can give you one number and you can do the rest of the work. Now, it took about three minutes to bevel this sleeper, but here's why that's worth it. Like we would never do that, but it was worth it in this case. And that's because we don't have to do any math up here where the ridge lands on the sleeper and the sleeper lands on sheathing. That means that this sharp point is made to the math. We use the other angle for the 512 sheathing. We cut that, we bevel this. The other sleeper is gonna come right here. Actually, let me show that. Keep in mind that we did not center this just so that it would hold itself. But essentially that's how it's gonna land up on the roof give myself a splinter. <laughs> but this guy would actually be right here. So center of ridge would line up here. The edges or shoulders of the ridge line up like that, but splitting both. Rewatch this about 40,000 times so that that all makes sense. Um, what was the last thing I wanted to mention? You'll probably do some splice in there. With... Yeah. Yeah, because otherwise it gets so stinking long. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. Let's come back up to here. Okay. You're out of the frame. So the bevel here, oh yeah, back up no, just a little bit. Okay, yeah. So okay, how so do how do you figure out, yeah. okay, so how do you figure out? <laughs> Sorry, I keep talking. I do that all the time too, and then I know where to splice. Okay. So how do you figure out the uh, bevel angle, the backing angle? Any, when, go. How do you figure out the backing angle for the sleeper? So the Build Calc app will tell you what the 712 backing bevel is and the 512. Add both of those numbers together, subtract from 90, that's your saw setting. If it was a regular pitched roof, you would just take the backing bevel times two, subtract from 90. That works if you're less than 612, otherwise it goes past the capacity on most saws, unless you have a swing table. So that worked out to be like 52.8 degrees, something like that. By making that one cut, all we have to do is put everything together. No math here. I'll probably follow up with how do you get this length? I'll follow that up in a blog post. That's a whole different animal. And honestly, it's gonna make, require a SketchUp drawing because this three dimension and a 25 foot beam, we can't show it. Anything else? Oh, I know, one last thing. Yeah. Now for some of you, 
An overframe roof is a great way to deal with split pitch. So if your roof is a 712, but it's landing on a 512, 712 plumb, 712 seat, but you set your saw to the roof slope that you're landing on. So in this case, that's 512, so 22 and a half degrees in round numbers. That's all you have to do. You will always get these right without doing any math. You just look at your speed square. It's a 612 roof, 26 and a half degrees. I'm landing on that, that's the bevel, but the roof I'm framing is a 1212 plumb seat. Oh, and one last thing. If you're one of those people that thinks you should bevel sheeting, don't forget that your sheeting on an overframe roof has to be the same as the backing bevel. Show them, Kyle. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Boom shakalaka. You guys see that? It's beautiful. The angle only works if you have a Martinez titanium square. <laughs> and now the moment of truth. You can do all the cutting and all the math, but there is an order of assembly. One is get those big heavy sleepers down on the ground and just tack them down toward the beam. You know where that needs to go and then butt them tight and tack them at the top. Now, I went ahead and measured down the plumb cuts on the rafters and we nailed a two by four. That will hold the LVL ridge. Uh, it's heavy, so it's just a helper. So Kyle's just kind of lining up the top. I'm gonna bring over the LVL ridge. Once it's in, we check it for level. Full disclosure, I ended up cutting an inch off those sleepers to slide it downhill. I don't know why that happens, but I've had some old timers tell me that too. So anyway, plan on making some adjustments. The math is perfect, but <laughs> hey, the math's perfect, but the framers are not. So some minor adjustments. Basically, you wanna make sure everything fits roughly before you blast it off. The second rule of awesome framing is the more nails you put into something, the more likely it is that it's wrong. We go ahead and tack the two gable common rafters, and then we use one of the smaller common rafters for the lower roof, in line with the gable to mark and locate that lower ridge. We go ahead and cut it to fit and set it. Now essentially we've got the skeleton tacked. We double check that everything planes, we run a string across, double check for level. Now it's time to start nailing those California jacks. Now we go ahead and blast down the sleepers, get those nailed off into the rafters below. We go ahead and support the heel of the LVL ridge. Now it's time to start setting all those California jacks. We set the very first shortest ones. Remember our, well, as you'll see in here in just a moment, our shortest jack is 12 inches. We measure two feet off of that across the ridge. We block as we go, and we keep checking to make sure that those jacks are parallel to the gable end. Um, we had a couple that were just a little off, and that's, that's just what happens. I'm not gonna complain about it. I know I recut number two. If you don't get those level cuts just right sometimes when they're long, they, they don't wanna land on layout. We go ahead and we eyeball that LVL ridge to keep it straight. I don't get too worried, especially with just two by six California jacks, about overloading one side of the roof, and then or one side of the ridge and then having it bow. It did, realistically, that just doesn't happen. The jacks aren't that heavy. After lunch, it was time to finish that lower 712 section. We got the rafters set on my side. Again, we're not worried about pushing that LVL ridge around. So we block and set those. And then I went ahead and started framing in the gable end while Kyle finished the rafters on the left side. And then it was bird block time and we were done for the day. Let's get into the math and the theory. So you're looking at a garage ridge. Well, this is the garage, but it spans across the porch. That's a 712 and it lands on top of the 512. Here's how that looks. 512 roof fully sheathed. The sleeper is gonna land on top of the sheeting. I have a 712 rafter here. And then here's our five and a half by 15 glue lamp. Now, if I come to the other side, this is why we call it an overframe roof is because the 712 overframes on top of the 512. Uh, typically, we call them California Valleys here. I don't know why, but that's what we call them. And then all the jack rafters that go from the ridge to the sleeper, we call those California jacks. Here's how you do the math. This is actually really, really simple. So first of all, I have a 10 inch heel stand on my 512 rafter, and I went ahead and made the 712 the same. And it makes the math here a little bit easier for me. So I have a 10 inch heel stand, but really what I wanna know is the height at the back of my plate to the top of the sheeting. Why do I wanna know that? because that's the back side of my beam where the sleeper is going to go. Sleeper on top of sheeting, and it's going to slide downhill until it hits my beam. 
So I want to know this number from the top of the sheeting along the back side of the plate to the ground. Super easy to do. So let's calculate that. I take the five and a half inch plate, make that the run, it's a horizontal number, five inch pitch, and I get a rise of two and five sixteenths. And you can see that on the drawing. But I also need to know what the cut depth is of my roof sheeting. I'm using half inch zip roof sheeting, make that the run, enter a five inch pitch, that's the roof that we're on, and I click diagonal because it's the plumb depth. So that's two and nine sixteenths. Okay. So that gives me a total height above the plate of 12 and 13 sixteenths. You see it right here. Subtract that from 10, and th these two numbers put together is 2 and 13 sixteenths. So now I'm going to use that as the rise of a 712 triangle because now I'm going east west, and the east west roof is 712. So here's what it looks like in build calc. I'm going to take 2 and 13 sixteenths, make that the rise, 7 inch pitch, that's the roof, and go run, 4 and 13 sixteenths. That's how we get this number of 4 and 13 sixteenths. Now it could be a little confusing at first, but since these plate lines is where the roof intersects, then I should be on the back side of this rafter because that's our height above plate. Back side of the rafter corresponds with the back side of the beam at the top of the sheeting, because that's what we calculated. Remember, 9 sixteenths for the cut depth plus the 2 and 5 sixteenths puts me here, but I need to be measuring from here. So 4 and 13 sixteenths. Now keep track of that number, and let's see why that's important. First of all, you can tell it's because we're sliding the sleeper. This edge of the sleeper is where everything's going to plane. And the part of the reason for that is that with a beveled sleeper, I don't have to make any adjustments at the top. This line at the sharp, that corresponded to right where we were at a moment ago. That's this line on top of the roof sheeting. Do you see that? It goes along the roof sheathing, comes to the point. I don't have to make any adjustments here at all. Once I calculate the length of the sleeper, it's sharp to sharp. to sharp and sharp. Sharper the miter, sharper the bevel. So I always read it off as sharp, 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 to sharp. <laughs> this is kind of a dumb thing that we do. Sharp to sharp to sharp to sharp. Okay, now there's that four and three sixteenths. So you keep track of that. Here's how we do the math. This is really easy. So first of all, we need to know this angle, which happens to be exactly the same as the roof sheathing angle on the 512. So here's how we calculate that in build calc. I always just pick some stupid arbitrary number like 20 feet and I go 20 feet run 5 inch pitch because the sheathing angle that we're looking for is the one that's on the 512. It's the 512 sheathing angle. Because it's an irregular roof I then hit 7 inch convert hip valve or irregular pitch. Hit hip valve again. Now notice in the middle I have major pitch 5 inch and minor pitch seven inch. So we're looking for the five inch, which is the major. Keep track of that and scroll down. Here's the minor or the major sheathing angle, 56.6. Major sheathing angle, 56.6. Now keep track of that. Here's the math. My beam length or the span for the 712 roof is 25 feet. I'm going to subtract that four and 13 sixteenths on each side. I have to do the same thing to the other side because the ridge centers. So now that's my new span. Divide that by two, enter that as the run, but what do I put for the angle? 56.6 pitch. When I click diagonal, that is now the length of the sleeper, sharp to sharp to sharp to sharp. But even more than that, ready to have your mind blown? When I click rise, now, that gives me from the very center all the way to the top, I can measure up and put a mark up there to help me locate these valleys. That is all you have to do. So here's how I figure out the California Jacks. My spacing is 24 inches on center, so I hit 24 inch store five. That's on center spacing, okay? Now I'm gonna hit 20 feet run 
We're calculating 712 jacks, so seven inch pitch. Remember it's irregular, so I have to go five inch and then convert irregular pitch or hit bow. Now click jack. Notice at the top, 24 inches is my spacing. My difference in jack lengths is one foot one and seven eighths. So that's why if I start with a 12 inch, then I just add one foot seven and seven eighths all the way down until my last jack is shorter than my common. Okay, you're gonna have to rewatch this a few times. And trust me, I have to kind of go through this each time too, but that's the basic math. There's a few things I wanted to mention now that we're ready to sheet this roof. Obviously, I still have to cut the lookout and finish the gable end trim. So I do that first. When it comes to these roofs, I like to sheet from the top down because I can walk around. Like there, I'm on a ladder, but for the majority of this roof, the sheeting, I can walk on that 512. So I snap a line 49 inches down from the top. That gives me a one inch air gap. Kyle already knows the angle of the valley sheeting because we figured it with build calc. And I can just give him one number and we just work our way down. I find it to be a little safer. It doesn't really matter. It's just my preference. If you haven't tried it, I say try it. Might not like it. We don't always do it from the top down, but when we can, I like to do that. So knowing the math makes this go really fast. When your cut guy only needs a number, not a series of numbers, it goes faster. The other advantages is when you have like a, a little piece there at the top. I have a bunch of reference points now, so I know that that piece is gonna be cut right. And then we use up the scrap as we go. This is zip roof, which means we tape the seams and it does not matter if you start at the top or the bottom. It, there, you don't have to shingle the tape because it's self-terminating flashing. Just remember to roll the tape. So while Kyle rolls the field tape, I go ahead and use the six inch tape and go out the valley and that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them below. I will do my best to answer those. <laughs> Hopefully it's understandable. Rewatch the video a few times and see if you can't pick out the math. It's not that hard, just repetition.